There are about 15 models on the European B crossover market today. The three best sellers are the funky Renault Captur, grown-up Peugeot 2008, and I have no idea why people buy it Opel Mokka. After three years in the showrooms, Peugeot 2008 has been given a midlife facelift, which resulted in, please excuse me while I consult the press release, more pronounced wheel arches, new grille, some undercarriage protection, and new colors. Just in case Peugeot press office decided black paint is the one that looks best in online videos. Only if it's a video from a funeral, guys. The press release then talks about a powerful and solid looking stance, we'll ignore that. And then there's the new 1.2 PureTech petrol engine producing 130 horsepower, working with a six-speed manual transmission, and this is the car we have here. Just to remind you, Peugeot 2008 replaced 207 SW in recent years most manufacturers abandoned B-segment estates in favor of more trendy B crossovers. Peugeot 2008 shares many elements with the 208 which becomes apparent when you sit behind the wheel. If you've seen this dashboard before, it was in Peugeot 208. Also here the instrument cluster is mounted on top and the steering wheel is small so don't try to raise it because then you won't be able to see the dials instead make sure the wheel center is at your chest level like in any other car as usual peugeot is unable to design two cup holders which will hold a half a liter bottle of water i'm used to that anyway depending on the market cup holders may even be unavailable in lower trims besides the cup holders extras on this car include panoramic sunroof, sat-nav and grip control system. <laughs> okay, so there is this tiny problem with rolling start in second gear. So you're approaching a junction, probably still in second gear, you look around and you see you can go and then you can't you have to downshift to first gear, which is not really cool. But apart from that, on the road, Peugeot 2008 is a very nice car to drive. With the 130 horsepower PureTech engine, there's enough power to overtake. Over the last few years, either Peugeot gearboxes improved slightly or I just simply got used to them. I don't know. I remember complaining about visibility in the pre-facelift model and again, compared to the competition, it's average. Okay, so the A-pillar may be obstructing it slightly, but compared to the competition, you just don't get anything much better or anything much worse. The seats are comfortable, but I wouldn't mind lumbar support adjustment on longer journeys. The back seats are much worse, we'll get to that in a moment. It seems the suspension has improved somewhat. Dumping is better even on 17-inch alloys. Peugeot 2008 with the 1.2 130 horsepower three-cylinder engine easily reaches motorway speeds and remains a comfortable motorway cruiser, also thanks to the sixth gear. I mean, it's not Mercedes-Benz quiet because there is some wind noise around the A-pillars, but it is quiet enough. 2008 with this engine has a 0 to 100 km per hour time of just above 9 seconds. Peugeot promises combined fuel economy figure of below 5 liters per 100 km, but in my non-scientific combined cycle the car uses about 8 liters. And the fuel gauge showed less than half of the 50 liter tank just after 200 km, but that's normal in Peugeot's. First half seems to disappear instantly and the second half seems to last forever. Peugeot stresses that 2008 is not an off-roader, but in higher trim levels and with more powerful engines, you can order something called grip control. It's a system controlling ESP. Depending on the terrain type, you choose with a knob next to gear lever. Although 2008 has almost 17 cm ground clearance, I suggest you never forget this is only a front-wheel drive car. What irritates me is the stop and start system with PSA three-cylinder engines. The car vibrates when the car stops and when the car starts and when I'm shutting the engine off completely, I suggest you do hold the brake and the clutch for a bit longer because for a split second the car feels like it's still going even though the key can be already in your hand out of the ignition. And again, this is not the first time I see this in a Peugeot.
and the handbrake, it's easier to engage it than disengage it. I like the mature styling of Peugeot 2008, the car stands out from the crowd, but I don't know why bother with optically raising the rear roofline when there is no more headroom in the back. In fact, the panoramic roof limits it. But still, you can fit two 175cm adults back here. Unfortunately, the bench is rather hard, so no long drives back here for me, please. Check out the rear back rests which fold flat, but the rest of the 350 liter boot remains largely unchanged. There are only a couple of anchor points around the floor, but no shopping bag hooks, and the parcel shelf still falls on my head when I need to lean inside the boot, for example, to reach the full size spare wheel, which is available in Poland. Prices of Peugeot 2008 start at around 15,500 euro. The 130 horsepower PureTech model in Allure trim costs about 21,650, with options around 23,800 euro. At this price point, you could consider Fiat 500X, which can be more customized, or a Suzuki Vitara with decent all wheel drive, but much too expensive with a turbocharged engine. And then there is the slightly bigger Renault Captur, better handling Mazda CX-3 and also very very expensive Honda HR-V. You could also step up your game and try Citroen C4 Cactus or Mitsubishi ASX. Tough call, especially in the less powerful engine variants. But Peugeot 2008 with the 130 horsepower PureTech engine is, in my opinion, the most versatile choice. And what are your priorities when choosing a small crossover? Let me know in the comments below, share, rate and subscribe and if you like what I do, help me make it better by donating to PayPal or Patreon, you'll find the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This seems like a bit of Peugeot specialty this and uh, it's disintegration. Basically this is a new car with about 800 kilometers on the clock and a bit of trim on the wheel arch is already coming off. Um, it's just glued, it's just glued and probably due to high temperatures this glue started melting. Brilliant Peugeot!